cameras. The headland feature is Samsung's own ISOS LHP2 200 megapixel camera. It's joined by a far more conventional 12 megapixel wide angle camera with a 120 degree field of view, plus a pair of 10 megapixel telephoto cameras for a 3x and 10x optical zoom. And its incredible zoom capabilities make the camera so much more versatile than what's on any other phone available today. These telephoto cameras take photos that are impossible to replicate on any other smartphone, at least with the same quality. The camera is also equipped with optical image stabilization and laser autofocus. But I will not load you further with characteristics, let's move on to examples. In broad daylight, the main camera takes great looking pictures. Shots have a vibrant, exciting tone with strong colors and masses of detail. I like the overall atmosphere the camera creates, which straddles the line between realism and hyperrealism very effectively. Most of the time the colors are amped up by just the right amount, but it still can slip into oversaturation in some situations. And there is nothing wrong actually, that's how the auto mode is supposed to work. Plus you get the sorts of pro and expert raw modes to play around with and get photos better tailored to your liking. We'll talk more about this a little later. There's plenty of objective improvement in the Galaxy S23 Ultra's photos to be seen when you look from up close. Images are now notably sharper all the way to the corners of the frame. The old one wasn't perfect in this respect. The ultrawide sensor was upgraded from an IMX563 to an IMX564, but other than the model number, its performance seems identical. Probably noise performance got better, things are just cleaner now. Colors are accurate, dynamic range is plenty wide, detail is very good. It's also worth noting that you can shoot close-up subjects with the ultrawide thanks to its autofocus, something you can't do with the cheaper S23s. The primary camera supports 50 megapixel and full 200 megapixel resolution, though in most cases it's better to use the default 12 megapixel photo mode, as it handles exposure much better. Check out these 212 megapixel photos to see what I mean. Both the sky and sea are much whiter in the second photo than in the first. This trend continues in other scenes as well. But of course, 200 megapixel does have some advantages, including better detail, although not much to be honest. So if you're not gonna crop a photo, then it is better to stick with the regular 12 megapixel mode. Zoom. This is without a doubt one of the best features of the phone. We get two telephoto lenses, one of which can zoom from 3 to 10 times and the second from 10 to 100. Now, instead of a thousand words, here is an example of a 3x zoom with the S21 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. And now 10x zoom. I think the difference is obvious. Even though smartphones use the same sensors with the same specs, there is a noticeable jump in clarity and resolution. But keep in mind that these cameras need light. Given that a 10x camera is even slower than a 3x one, the phone will often use the 3x camera for low light 10x shots, and only switch to the 10x lens once you go past 15x magnification. Similarly, sometimes the main camera might be used for 3x zoom. Therefore, for example, Vivo X90 Pro Plus with a 3.5x optical zoom can take clearer photos at 10x magnification than Samsung. But with normal lighting, everything falls into place. Here you can see examples of Vivo's and Samsung's 10x zoom during the day on the street, where the zoom is supposed to be used, and not in a room where it's easier to get closer to the object. As before, portrait mode on the Ultra works at both the 1x and 3x zoom levels, each sourced from the respective camera. There are no main camera digital zoom shenanigans. Samsung made a point in the S23 series presentation about improved depth mapping, with a particular mention of glasses. Of course we have tested this, and as it turned out, the claims hold water. The S23 Ultra picked out the frame of the glasses with excellent precision. In general, portrait shots from Samsung are very good, and the new flagship maintains this high level. As for the selfies, these year's models are getting a new 12 megapixel instead of 40 megapixel. To be honest, I really like the 40 megapixel selfie camera on the previous flagships, so I just was hoping it wouldn't get worse. And it didn't get any worse, so you can breathe out. But I didn't see any progress either. In other words, I didn't understand why the selfie camera was changed. You'd be getting more or less the same selfies. That's not to say the S23 Ultra selfies are bad. On the contrary, the dynamic range is excellent, colors and skin tones are accurate. Now, for a low-light photo, the S23 Ultra does an 
impressive job, but there are some quirks. There are no questions in the evening. In these lighting conditions, the auto is typically good enough to get your balanced exposures with well-preserved highlights and good development in the shadows. Just look how beautifully the sun highlights the stones by the water. It's great that the camera can capture such fine details. In fact, the auto mode in much darker conditions is also very good. Most often, I get better shots with night mode disabled. Basically, you are shooting in normal photo mode and then you will see a yellow crescent pop up. This will mean that the auto night mode is activated. Using it, you can capture such stunning nighttime scenes. Now, why don't I like the separate night mode? Here's an example to show what I mean. This photo is in auto mode and this is in night mode. Of course, with night mode everything becomes brighter. But what happens to the sky? Is it the northern lights from Minecraft or what? Guys, I'm not nitpicking. This is how the night mode usually works. Here are some more examples. I'm really hoping, almost certain, that future updates will address this issue. Because in its current form, the night mode on the S23 Ultra with a long exposure is completely inedible. At the same time, in auto mode, some details are lost in the dark, yes, but the photos look much more atmospheric and closer to what I want to see from the night mode. I don't want a phone trying to make a low-light environment look like it wasn't one, which most cameras run fully do nowadays. This long exposure night mode is probably useful when it's too dark and when nothing moves, then you can get the most out of dark areas. In any case, try different modes and settings. This is what I like about the S23 Ultra camera, it's so flexible. That being said, if you are not ham-handed, then you can take very nice night shots. I like that the lights aren't overexposed, which I will credit to the 200 megapixel image sensor that's able to process more details. Colors are well preserved and the auto white balance didn't show issues with warm and mixed lighting. Again, keep in mind that a camera is just a tool in your hands, not a magic wand, especially at night. The ultra wide camera's low light performance isn't anything special, but it's okay, examples on your screens. Nighttime zoom photography requires a bright subject. For example, here is 1x and 3x. If I just zoom in on the first photo, it will still be inferior to the one with 3x. This one was taken at 10x zoom, now 30x and 100x. As for the nighttime portrait, just like during the day, we get great pictures. Of course, sometimes the skin tones are off because a lot depends on how warm the street light is, but in general, it seems to me we get very pleasant and atmospheric pictures. I really find that these photos are quite lovely and pleasant. And before we get to the video section, I'd like to talk about the new old expert remote. Old because the expert wrap has been around for like a couple of years now, and a new one because it's sort of built into the main camera app as a mode instead of obeying a separate app. You get granular exposure controls, shutter speed, temperature and so on. But most importantly, it can output both JPEG and DNG files. DNG is a type of raw file format that has not been processed by the phone. It literally means digital negative. Those DNG files can be edited in Lightroom Mobile. It gives you the ability to play with color and dynamic range to a much greater extent than with the default JPEG files. Here are some samples of the photos I took while using this mode and edited entirely on my phone. And finally, what about video capabilities? Well, in proper lighting, the footage looks excellent, crisp and clear. Maybe a little too bright, it's very sunny outside, so I can see some overexposure here, but it looks very nice anyway. I also want to highlight how smooth and accurate the focus is. There is a feeling that I can rely on it and not worry that it will ruin a beautiful shot. I couldn't find any differences between Full HD and 4K, except the resolution, of course. The same applies to the frame rate. 30 FPS and 60 FPS clips have essentially the same quality, which is always nice to see. As the sun lowered on the horizon, the exposure began to work out more accurately, and now it's almost nothing to complain about. Stabilization works well, even with super steady mode disabled. I didn't feel like I needed it. Even if we see some kind of cheater in the footage, it doesn't look aggressive, it's quite natural and looks good. However, super steady mode adds more smoothness. For example, here I am walking along a stone beach with steady mode disabled. Now enabled. 8K footage is a meaningful improvement over the previous model. Here is 8K with the S21 Ultra and now with the S23 Ultra. And it's not just the extra 6 frames per second. For one, it now uses the full width of the sensor. It's also sharper and better detailed than what the old model could master. 8K videos take up a lot of storage space, although when compared with the 4K 60fps mode, it's not much more, about 50% more. By the way, let's look at 4K at 60fps here. Just like 
like with photos, 8K mode shoots whiter. You can see it in the sky. So if there is no specific need for 8K, then you can stick to 4K. To sum up, I think 8K is the way to go and Samsung is on the right track by investing in its development. Zoom videos in daylight shows a good result. This is an example of 3x zoom and this is a 10x zoom. And finally, selfie videos are very high quality and capture excellent detail and generally accurate colors. Unless the sun's placing in directly into the camera, autofocus does a great job, which for a selfie camera can be considered a big plus. I was most impressed with the low light videos compared to last year's flagships. The difference is massive. There is nothing the camera interface needs you to enable. In the settings, the auto FPS option should be enabled by default. As a result, we get a wide dynamic range, lots of saturation, the shadows develop quite respectably without turning them into a noise fest. Colors are also don't appear to suffer from any degradation at night. The noise control is excellent overall, but there is a catch. Ok, I like how the camera provides light sources and low glare. It creates a very pleasant mood. But here is the catch. I want you guys to understand that there are no perfect cameras, so you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of your camera. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's camera provides really great low light performance, lowering the frame rate, so when you move the camera around or make quick panning movements, there is an annoying strobe effect. Most importantly, there is noise right away. And as soon as the camera stops, the noise disappears. Software magic in action. The same thing if you are shooting low light on the go. The video may lag and give a not very pleasant result. Perhaps the chip still doesn't have enough time to process it. During the day, there is no such problem. You can run and shoot and everything will be smooth. There are no questions about stabilization. All the footage that you see was shot entirely handheld. This is a common issue for smartphones. Here is an example video compared to the Vivo X90 Pro Plus, which has a bigger sensor but still lags even more horribly. In addition, the Galaxy has better detail and colors. Vivo is lighter, but what's the point if it's a mess? So at night, I recommend either keeping the camera still or moving it smoothly. That way, you will get a consistent frame rate with low levels of noise. Within reasonable limits, of course. If you shoot in pitch darkness, then there will be a lot of background noise. For reasons of clarity, here is the S21 Ultra and S23 Ultra side by side. There is only two years difference between these smartphones. Do you still think mobile technologies are stagnating after that? The autofocus in these lighting conditions works well, and I really like how the camera captures people. The exposure may vary slightly, but it does so carefully without sudden jumps, much better than it was before. Night zoom videos surprised me to some extent because I expected the worst. There are certainly enough issues in background noise, but still you can get some details. The selfie camera at night doesn't perform as the main one. There is too much noise and distortion, and problems with stabilization. I didn't really like how it shoots at night. Well, it was a long story about the camera, but I wanted to make my point clear. The S23 Ultra's camera really makes an impression. It's the versatility that makes it so interesting. A bunch of different modes, zoom capabilities, expert raw, not expert raw, and so on. I don't see myself getting bored with this camera in a week or two, and I feel confident I will be able to take any photo I want with it. And that's something other phones can't quite provide. And I want you guys to hold this thought at the review's conclusion. When we sum up the results, this idea will be helpful. It is also important to understand that photos and videos are largely a matter of taste. What one likes, another may not like, and that's okay. According to most blind camera tests, some Google Pixel from last year usually performs best, so there can be no any type of special assessment. The photos may or may not appeal to you, but the S23 Ultra's camera's versatility is hard to deny.